You're joking, aren't you? It's the Teesside Chef. Flaky Indian paratha flatbread that I call the naan bread killer. I've never actually seen a paratha stab a naan bread to death with a bayonet or anything like that. It's just that after making these, you might never want to make a naan bread again. And the base dough couldn't be any easier. With 500 grams of plain flour, one and a half generous teaspoons of salt, and a teaspoon of sugar, along with 250 millilitres of hot water and 50 grams of yoghurt. And we're going to stir these wet ingredients together well, before adding the wet to the dry, and you could just use 300 millilitres of hot water instead of adding yoghurt, but I just think the yoghurt gives the paratha a nicer texture. And once everything has been successfully enlisted, we can bring it all together roughly with a spoon before going in with our fighting hammers, and bringing this dough together properly. You don't have to knead the dough too much, just bring it together until it's as smooth as a gun barrel. And you should be left with a pretty sticky dough when all that tomfoolery is out of the way, which we'll need to cover with cling film and allow to rest for around 20 to 30 minutes. And here comes the Paratha's secret weapon in its campaign to commit genocide on the naan bread population. 75 grams of softened butter, which I'm flavouring with six cloves of garlic, but you could use any flavouring you like here or not, depending on your preference, and we're going to tactically deploy this garlic butter in a jiffy, so stick around for that. Our dough is ready after its little bit of R&R &R now, and even though this dough will make eight paratha, we're not going to cut it into eight pieces just yet, and the reason for that will be revealed all in good time, so just be patient. So take the whole piece of dough, and on a well-floured surface, begin to shape the ball into a rectangular shape, making sure to flour the top of the dough well too. And making sure that you have enough flour to keep everything moving is very important here as we roll out the dough into a large rectangular shape now. And you want to go around regularly while rolling and tidy the border of the dough to keep straight edges and that roughly rectangular shape. And here comes the scoop and the key to the perfect paratha and that is buttering the rolled out dough generously with our garlic Butter, this will make garlic paratha. But as I said, you can use anything you like to flavour the butter and you can be very generous with your flavourings. And incorporating the butter into the bread in this way is going to give us a lovely flaky texture to the final product. And once that dough's been generously buttered, we need to sprinkle the top generously with more flour before rolling the whole thing up as tightly as possible. And as I roll this, you can see why I warned you to use plenty of flour on your surface when rolling out the quite sticky dough. So if you didn't do that, tough titties I'm afraid, boys and girls. And I'm always making sure to keep my edges tidy all the time as I go. And we're rolling this whole thing into a tight tube. And when you get to the end, just make sure the whole thing is sticking together. And now the garlic butter is all tucked in there. Now we can cut the dough into eight equal pieces, which will make up our squad to take on the naan bread enemy. And as I bring in one of the soldiers to show you, you can see the swirly pattern running through it there. So to form each paratha flatbread on a floured surface, round each piece up into a tight circle, and with plenty of flour on top, roll out into a circular shape that should be around seven inches or so across, give or take. And as I do this, I have a pan preheating on a medium heat, to which I'm going to add around a tablespoon of oil or so. And I always think it's a good idea once that oil is in the pan there just to spread it around with a brush or a piece of kitchen paper before placing the paratha in the pan. And you want to cook this for two to two and a half minutes. And as it cooks, brush the top with a little oil, either the excess oil from the pan, or you can have a little bit on the side on standby, ready to mobilize. And after two to two and a half minutes, simply flip and cook the other side for around two minutes-ish. And because we've used a fair bit of flour to marshal these paratha, it's wise to clean the pan after each one has cooked to get rid of any leftover shrapnel in there and whatnot. And while each one cooks, you should always be preparing the next one. And that middle there can get quite sticky with the butter, and if it splits, just mush it back together while rolling. And uh, it's also a good idea, I think, to brush off any excess flour before cooking. So let's repeat the whole process again. Hot pan, tablespoon of oil, brush the oil around, flip after two to two and a half minutes. And you know when these are done, you can brush with more oil or garlic butter if you like, 
to make these sumptuous flatbreads even more indulgent, before placing in a damp tea towel to let them all steam away, and these paratha will have a light crisp that will yield to a soft, rich interior, which will be flaky and creamy and buttery, the perfect foil for curry, and these paratha are best eaten fresh out of the pan, so if you want to make them ahead, I think it's better to fridge the dough and then cook them just before serving for the best experience. And let's get this one locked and loaded. Butter chicken here, and I have a link for the butter chicken curry coming up. And I have to get the rice on there, of course, because uh, as a Brit, I love to combine my carbohydrates. Death to all naan breads and glory to paratha, the only Indian flatbread you'll ever need. See you later, fellow paratha warriors. Terra.